By space, you can also know the hierarchy. You go to any office, bigger the office, bigger the boss. We got this from Rusus monkey, you know, that monkey, species of monkey. They urinate to define their boundary. So, who are in you urinate for the longest, they have a bigger boundary. You know, so, the, so he's the king. So, we build walls. You know. So, the point is, the more space you occupy, suggests some sort of hierarchical level. Now, if you invade in somebody's space, people feel offended. Our house, our cars, our belongings are extension of that space. In Western countries, even if somebody walking down, he looks at your place or room, you can, that is called trespass. It's a different culture. I'm just pointing out how it is done in different cultures. So the point is, and not only that, this space also where people feel comfortable talking to each other varies from culture to culture. For example, Americans keep about 23 inches distance when talking. French people stand closer, about 13 to 15 inches. Now imagine an American lady in Paris. She is used to what distance? 23. French gentlemen. So you will walk closer and say, bonjour mademoiselle. You know. And she will move away to create that extra 10, 15 inches. And he will think that American lady is unfriendly. American lady will think that French gentleman is aggressive. Because they did not know each other's space requirement, the misinterpretation happened. So generally, the aggressive gestures, ladies and gentlemen, are in upper part of your body. Assertive gestures are at the waist level, this level. Confidence, this, it is about this level. Non-assertive gestures are below the waist level. Generally, in this part of the body, that is the non-assertive gestures. And this is what, what means, what does it mean? That if you want to be assertive, not only you have to know this, you have to practice this. You have to, in order to become assertive, you need to practice that. And the most beautiful part of it is, that once you start practicing, the external part of the body will change the internal automatically by practice. In one class, I just called somebody from the class and made the person stand like this. And I said, how do you feel? He said, I feel very down and depressed. I said, now stand like this. How do you feel? He said, I feel I own this place. You know. So one of the management consultants from the University of California Law Challenge, she said, I can't believe this. You planted this guy. You know. I said, okay. I planted him. You get your person. She went down in the hotel room, you know, some down in the, and she brought one of the waitress from the hotel. He said, I'll do it with him. I said, fair enough. So she told the waiter to do the same thing, stood like that, he said, don't feel right, this, that, stood like that, ma'am, I own this hotel. <laughs> and this is the most powerful thing that I want to appreciate, that by changing something in your posture, you are changing the internal mapping. And it's so easy. So work at your body language practice assertive postures. Rest will follow. As I told yesterday when I was talking about body language, I quoted the Gita, you know, verse 54 from second chapter. Krishna in the second chapter is worth repeating, so I am going to share it with you, people who were not here yesterday. In the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which is a Sankha Yoga, Lord Krishna is talking about Sita Pragna, man of steady wisdom. And Arjuna is asking, suppose Lord I met a man of steady wisdom, how would I recognize him? Sita Pragna Shaka Bhasha Samadhi Stasya Keshwa Sita Dihi Kim Prabhaseta Kim Asita Vrajeta Kim. How does he walk? How does he talk? How does he sit? I, how can I find out from his body language that this is a man of steady wisdom? In the same way, if you can find out a man of steady wisdom, you can also find out who is non-assertive, who is aggressive, and who is uh, assertive by looking at their postures and gestures. And as I told you, the key is, aggressive gestures are above the waist level, assertive gestures are at the waist level, and non-assertive gestures are below the waist level. So recognize this. And practice this. 
one more thing you need to do in order to become a certain so far i've been talking about the good things now one part a small part of a certain as training is also devoted to protective skill the basic purpose there is in gentlemen of a session is to you know make your relationship better make your interaction better and uh, you will have more friends and more networking ability that is one part but there are some people who are out to get you that happens to be part of the reality of surviving in this world and as i told you when i talked about the history of assertiveness i mentioned that uh, the whole thing was uh, you know talked about and the program was developed by dr manuel smith for the peace corps volunteers because these people could not handle questions that put them on the defensive so now how to do deal with such questions so part of assertiveness ladies and gentlemen is also called protective skills but before i go into protective skills just want to give you one example a typical example of a non assertive person the person's behavior you know i remember this uh, lady who went into a dentist office and uh, she said i want to have my teeth examined so the receptionist said go into that room take all your clothes off she said listen i have come to have my teeth examined not to have my clothes ironed she said listen no matter what you come dentist insist this she said okay so we went into the other room and she, there another lady sitting there is a some kind of a dentist i have come to have my teeth examined i have to take my clothes off and the woman said what are you complaining about i come to pay the bill so regardless of what demands are made made on you you comply that's the ultimate non assertive behavior and there are people who do this they never ask why so i want you to learn to ask why as to you to do learn to ask that question learn to stand up for what you believe in there might be times when you will have to pay the price for it but yes is it worth it the answer is yes now what are the protective skills so let me talk about the protective skills first protective skill is known as broken record technique before you use any protective skills please remember that when you dealing with people who are close to you when you dealing with who are close to you pay attention to their feelings because ultimately you do never want to hurt them that's number one two ask yourself a question is issue worth my effort is it does it really is it that important to me and three take time out to explain to that person so you don't hurt that person with this kavit let me talk about the broken record technique in broken record technique you keep repeating the same statement over and over again just like a pin gets stuck in a record it repeats it you always talk about i not you don't blame the person and say you three you do not reveal anything about yourself see our relationship with other people become better when we run to reveal ourselves instead of superfluous level at the same time when you reveal yourself to others you also become vulnerable that's why one of the definitions of love is that you are most vulnerable to the person whom you love because he has a lot of ammunition on you or is the american he got the goods on you so he can use that against you that's why we are afraid to share our feelings and hopes and ambitions with other people because they might ridicule they might exploit us by knowing that but if you want to become good in relationship you learn to reveal yourself and your inner feelings this is called an unasked and this is called self disclosure which for the other person becomes free information because that person has not asked about it. and this is how the relationship develop and become more profound but in this not protective skills you do not want to reveal anything about yourself and make yourself vulnerable so the first one is that you make eye contact you use i statement and that you do not reveal anything about yourself and you keep repeating the same statement and because you're going to repeat keep the statement simple so you don't forget it now let me illustrate this by giving you a case in 1969 i moved from iowa to montreal canada my friends in montreal told me that if you plan to live here you need a humidifier I didn't know what a humidifier was or what it did. I said, "Why?" He said, "That's a little machine which uh, spews out moisture in the air because in Montreal in the month of February 
it goes 30 degree minus below zero and with the wind blowing with which they call the chill factor when you factor that in it becomes 65 degree below zero which is cold very cold and the air dries out there's no humidity in the air so your nose will bleed your lips will crack the furniture will crack so there's a little machine you put water into it you plug it in and it spew out spews out moisture in the air to keep the humidity level I went to the department store paid hundred and ten dollars and bought the humidifier there was a sign on the wall that said defective warranty period I made a mental note of it I came home I put water in the machine I plugged it in the machine would not work I call up the company the department store I said I got this and it's not working he said sir please bring it within two weeks time because within the warranty we'll exchange it or give your money back I said I'm going out of town so I would not be available for next two weeks I'll come during the third week I'm informing you within the warranty period he said that's fair sir it's quite all right bring it during the third week third week I go person behind the counter I said my machine is not working I want to exchange it or give my money back now this is my broken record statement person behind the counter do you have a bill sir so I produce the bill the person looks at what the date see that sign sir no that's not the person who answered my phone so somebody else at the counter see that sign sir moment the person says see the sign sir two tools of manipulation are used see the sign sir means are you ignorant tool of ignorant two you should feel guilty because you're making unreasonable demand we have announced it on the wall that this is the policy of the company and you're still making unreasonable demand therefore you should feel guilty so two tools of manipulation are used just by that particular question you see that sign I don't look at the sign because I know what it says I look look at the person I said I know what it says I call within two weeks therefore I wanted to exchange it or give my money back I repeated my broken record statement sir this machine is used how can I be, how can we do it I said there is no way I can find out whether the machine works or not unless I put water into it so it technically is not used because it never works so I want to exchange it or give my money back sir I don't have the authority to do either so so far the person has given me three four no's in three different ways now remember ladies and gentlemen research suggests people generally have a quota of six no's so if you persist it becomes yes if you don't believe me watch any in the movies <laughs> the heroine says no six times and then it becomes yes <laughs> so I said show me the person who has the authority so manager comes on the scene now managers speak different language than other mortals so he comes and looks at me and says what seems to be the problem sir you know, it's not what is the problem what seems to be the problem now two sentences ladies and gentlemen in English language I don't like this is one when somebody asks me what seems to be the problem the second sentence I don't like is what can I do for you I remember one time I was to lecture in a university in America and the guy who invited didn't know who I was so when I thought I'll go say hello to him since he was nice enough to invite me so I had a few minutes extra I went to his cab, uh, office and he was working on something he looked up he didn't know who I was he said yes what can I do for you and because of my inbuilt thing about that I said sir you can pay my telephone bill <laughs> <laughs> so he was shy. he said what, what are you saying who are you I said I'm Rishi Kumar Pandya oh Professor Pandya what is this about telephone bill I said sir you asked me so I thought I'll suggest something <laughs> So he started laughing, he said, I'll never say that again. Another time, one other person said that, I said, so I looked at him in a very seriously, I said, listen, sir, you give me a list of your capabilities, and I'll decide what you can do for me. <laughs> so when this person says, what seems to be the problem, I looked at him, I said, no, it doesn't seem to be a problem, Mr. Smith, it is a problem. I know his name because he has a name plate on it. He doesn't know anything about me. I know a lot about him because the sociological profile of a person working in a department store is public knowledge. He is a high school dropout, he has a 237.50 cents dollar take home salary after taxes per week and he lives in a particular area in the town. I know all this. He knows zero about me plus my skin color will baffle him even more. So this is in Canada and they are whites and I am blonde. So I know that there are, so he has no way of knowing what I do or what I am. So I said Mr. Smith it doesn't seem to be a problem it is. So he went through this usual nose that the other person did. Then he says okay sir we do this we will repair this no cost to you which means I won in principle this is known as a working compromise therefore is acceptable